I ended up doing something stupid. Um, don't ever do this, ever. Ever do this to yourself because learn from me, learn from my failures. This month in September, not this month, September, I ended up quilting three custom quilts and also two, um, I was offered a job of doing three more custom quilts and I said no. And I would have made quite a bit of money, probably like $1,200 maybe in doing those quilts and I still said no. So yeah, come with me, share in my grievances about custom quilting. Let's, I'm gonna share my grievances. Yes, that's what this is about. Grievance number one. <laughs> I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. That's the truth. Uh, when someone says, and they give me a quilt, a custom quilt, um, oh, the pressure is on. It puts a lot of pressure on me. And I guess because I'm a piecer also and quilt top maker, I understand the amount of time and investment financially that someone is putting towards a quilt. And, and they're giving it to me and they're trusting me to know what I'm doing. And inside myself, though I've done a lot of custom quilts, maybe 20 I have under my belt, I still feel like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> now I don't share that when I take the quilt, but that's how I truly feel. Designing takes a lot. And then I don't like touching quilts until I have a set design placed in my heart before I even start because I don't want to ruin my client's quilt. So. One, a lack of confidence. I don't feel like I know what I'm doing. And two, the, the designing is, you could do a whole bunch of different stuff. And the truth is, until you get on the quilt, you really don't know how it's gonna look. And by the time you have it on the quilt, uh, you can't go back. Preparing the quilt takes a lot of time. The prep time is another grievance. I tend to do a lot of basting the quilt down and on one of the quilts, I was so glad that I did do that because we were short back fabric. I wouldn't have known, known that until I went through the whole quilt and basted it. Um, so the prep work takes forever. Believe it or not, you're using a lot of time on one, basting the quilt down, getting it ready, two, marking the quilt before you even start quilting. And um, sometimes marking takes just as long as starting to quilt. I found center and then I'm marking three inches from center to kind of quilt in this section and then also to like all the stuff that you see here I had to mark all the boundaries and borders and like here I marked it to let me know that this thread is coming off and I need to re-sew it but you have to mark the quilt a lot to kind of just give you um, the ability to custom quilt it. So let me share with you like the kind of time frame prep work can take. Sometimes when I'm basting a quilt, once I put it on the leaders and on the long arm, basting it can take me up to 30 minutes of going back and forth on the long arm. And then that doesn't include sitting down and marking the quilt. If you're just doing like, um, adding an extra border on an area of a quilt, it doesn't take that long. But if you're doing an intricate design, the marking can take an extraordinary amount of time and you need the time to mark the quilt because marking helps you with having very good accuracy in quilting the quilt down. And you want to do a good job because this is where the quilting process where you could kind of ruin the quilt. So marking helps a lot in showing you what the quilt kind of will look like before you even start working on it. My other grievance is body fatigue. Oh my Lord. My back ends up being fried from a hunching. Even though I tend to raise the machine up to where I'm not in a hunching position, but I'll end up being in a standing position for about four, five, six hours, stitching in the ditch a quilt down. And shoulders, upper back, 
maybe lower back if you're a huncher, which after a while I start hunching because I'm tired and I don't want to do it no more. And leaning over the machine and leg, well not leg pain, but standing for six hours, it really wears on your body. In these, er these areas, I went a half inch in and then I stitched that in the ditch and then kind of blocked it out. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn on my computer and then computer quilt these sections and do some beautiful feathers. After your custom quilting, you have to go back and do a lot of cleanup. As a matter of fact, if you do a lot of marking on your quilt, you're having to go back and spray all the marking off. I went ahead and I wiped this material trying to get rid of it. I'm in stitching over here and I'm gonna iron it. I'm trying to, if I get off right away to fix it. A lot of times you have to go back and re-sew sections that you had to unstitch, re-sew line work that kind of you didn't lock it in well or didn't connect to the other area of the stitching. And so I go through the whole quilt, the back and the front, and I mark it with my water soluble pin and make sure that I know where to go back and re-sew sections. Here the thread was undoing and here I need to stitch in the ditch. And here, like you can see here, this the thread was coming off. So you kind of go, once you've quilted the quilt, then you have to kind of clean the quilt. Any areas where the quilting was not attached, you have to reattach it. Then also too, <laughs> I ended up doing something stupid. Um, don't ever do this ever ever do this to yourself because learn from me learn from my failures and my mistakes I ended up changing my tensioner I ended up changing it and I've, I didn't have any loopies I didn't have any eyelashes or tension problems I didn't have anything but I ended up changing my check spring and I decided to change it before I started custom quilt I ended up having what's called loopies in the back of the quilt. And so when I finished quilting a huge section of this quilt, I saw these little uh, threads that loop up in the very back of the quilt. The stress that it put on me, it was horrible. But a friend of mine rescued me and I love her for it. She told me to use this tool and um, what it does is you could go in there and grab the loop and tuck it into the seam and lock it into the fiber of the batting and into the in between layers and it gets rid of them but it was a major mistake that i why <laughs> why that I did this to myself. I did check the tension, but what happened is I used a different thread and a different fabric underneath and different fabrics on top. So when I changed the quilt and put the quilt on, the fabric was a bit stiffer, the thread was different, and so this quilted very differently on that, and I ended up having a mess. And so my cleanup time for that quilt, I had to sit down and unstitch large sections of it and then go back and re-quilt it. And I had to go back and just spend like, probably like six hours cleaning up uh, a tension mess. It, it can make a grown woman cry. <laughs> I walked out of this room like devastated. Okay, let's talk about my hugest, biggest complaint about custom quilting for clients. It's time. The Americana quilt that I quilted, smaller than this quilt, but bigger than a baby quilt, I ended up just 
just in the marking, stitching in the ditch, the basting and all that stuff, nine hours. Yes, nine hours for that quilt. And that's a pretty small quilt. Now the fills took me another five hours, meaning the shells that I put on there, the meandering and the line work that I did on the border, um, the finishing touches, I, I believe, on the quilt, that took me about another five hours. So we're at 20, maybe 19 hours in a small throw size quilt. One of the reasons why I find custom work challenging is because people don't want to pay what it costs to get custom work. So custom quilts cost you a lot of time and you don't make the money back. The beautiful white and rainbow colored quilt, I spent 36 hours working on that quilt and uh, it ended up being that I made $8 an hour. And a lot of times, I'm just sharing my point of view, it's only mine, I take custom work for my favorite clients because I love them, or for a quilt that, you know, that quilt needs. Like it's an art piece to me and it's exciting for me to quilt it. And so I'm willing to invest the amount of time to quilt it, knowing that I'm not gonna make anything really out of it other than what I charge my client, but I know I'll be pretty. <laughs> That's how I justify it to myself. And I know it's my work. And so grievance number, whatever number we are on, you really don't make money on custom quilting. You will never get that money back. So it's, it's, it's hard to get that money back.